Alright guys, so I have been creating, as you can see my hair is crazy, um, but I wanted to show you what I've been working on, and uh, I'm getting lots of things lo um, loaded up on the Etsy shop and trying to make some money. Here today I'm showing you what we've gathered. I finally got all of these items cleaned off from the seas of Galveston and the Texas Gulf. So as you can see down here on the table, I've got some bones from the crucifix fish which are looking great once they're all clean and dried and um, these are actually their like spinal vertebrae columns so I've got a bunch of those which you could make some really beautiful um, if it was me I mean I would make some beautiful dainty earrings if I knew how to make earrings but I don't but I'm sure that none of, some of you do know how to do those things um, just some really really great pieces here so I'm going to be selling this whole lot together on my Etsy shop we've got about 13 different vertebrae bones here um, a lot of little shells and um, these are some of my favorites these barnacles that are like a bright pink purple um, I've got a hold stone here for you that came right out of the uh, Gulf of Mexico um, so there's one or two different holes in here, and there's also some coral growing around it. Um, so this is all coming together as either like a sea witch bone throwing kit, or just stuff for you to grind up and work with in your witchcraft workings. A lot of these can be made into necklaces as there's natural holes in the stones, etc. Um, some gorgeous, gorgeous, looks like a type of scallop shell. Um, some types of bony shells I haven't really seen before. I love doing workings in a seashell that's still connected. Um, doing working right inside and perhaps burying it or something. I've got these lovely black or gray oyster shells that have just been washed by the sea. Um, a couple of bones that I found on the beach, so some actual bones for your bone throwing kit here. It's a sea witch bone throwing kit. This is a great bone. And it's got a hole in it, so you could easily make it into a piece of jewelry. Um, some white rock that I found on the beach. Some brown rock that I found on the beach. Um, more and more of these beautiful barnacles here. They're so great. Um, even a feather that I found in the sea. Um, here is an oyster shell that's also got like a hole in it, so possibly you could do some fairy scrying, because it's kind of like a hold stone there. Um, Lots of different pieces. I love, love, love these black, gray seashells that I found on the beach. So let me show you now um, what I've been creating. Here you can see, and this will be a different Etsy order, but I've got a bunch of necklaces on my mannequin, okay? Now I'm going to actually try them all on and show them to you and tell you what they'll be good for. I like the barnacles too, Heather. Aren't they great? They're so pretty and purple and pinky. So. You know, it took me a long time to soak them and wash them and get them to where we're going to have them be an okay thing. Now, I took a lot of time on these, but more than time I put thought into them. My jewelry looks rustic. I'm not a jewelry maker, but I do put a lot of intent into why we might want to carry this around. So, I make my necklaces extra long so that you can put them over your head. A man or a woman or even a woman with giant hair like me. Um, so here's this piece. It just lays kind of right here in between your heart and your solar plexus chakra. But it'll be great that it's so long because it's in fact hold. So I thought, put it on while you're out in your woods doing a nature walk and perhaps look through your hold stone. There's the hole. And the hole I'm looking through is right there. And try and look for your fairies or your through the veil of the realm, right? So I thought it'd be cool to just have this on your neck and if you felt maybe your spirit guides talking to you or some tingles or you thought you saw an orb, just start looking through your hold stone that's right there on your neck. Now this is actually an oyster shell that I saw that ended up being like, had a bunch of holes worked into it through nature. So that's the first piece I have. Um, you know, they're, they're statement pieces, they're bulky, they they're not normal, they're not usual, okay? The jewelry that I make definitely isn't usual. Hi again! Metalhead Goss, nice to see you. I'm just showing you guys what I've been doing. Yes, these are on organic hemp cord. 
And we could talk about the properties of hemp as well, because, uh, but both, both of these are on, all of these are on organic hemp cord. That's what I do my necklace on. This one's dyed black. I like the black hemp cord. Um, so there's that one. Let's set it aside now that we've tried it on. This one is the only mixed media piece that I've done. And uh, this is on just some regular colored hemp cord. And it's two different shells that I've attached to this bone. And I found all these things on the sea. Here's the back of the necklace in case you were wondering what it looks like. Um, and when we put it on, let's put it on this way. Again, I make them big enough so they can just go over the head. I've added some knot magic in for the intention of, you know, going out and finding magical things. So I've added in some knot magic, and this lays here, um, again, on the belly, kind of above the solar plexus and under the heart. And it's got the, the two shells and then this big old bone. Okay, so we've got that necklace. All of these, again, will be up on the Etsy shop. I put a, a link to the Etsy shop in the description for those of you who are watching this now. <coughs> so there's that piece. Um, we've got this piece here, which is a broken part of this broken shell. But, again, it has holes in it. So I'm treating it as a holy stone. Like a holy stone as in stone with holes in it, not like holy Bible. Alright, put it over your neck. And now you've got this um, camera, if you will, where you can see into the uh, other realm. So there's a big, you can see all the holes in here, right? Holy stone. Well, it's a holy shell. But I thought this would be such a cool thing to just go looking for the fae with in the woods. or And it kind of covers your eye perfectly. I, I like the way that it is. Um, and so that's what this is. And I've just, I found two little holes and I wove the hemp through there. and it just kind of lays like this and again you could keep this under your sweater if you didn't want people to see what you had on you know if you're in the in the closet broom closet so to speak um, but this is just a black gray seashell that I found in the Gulf of Mexico and um, I think that it'd be fun to have that on your neck and do some looking into the other veil with alright this one very very hold as well just so much wear from the water and uh, it's more of just a statement piece or to have the shell energies but I mean you could definitely go looking through the holes in this one as well but I didn't make it as a scry piece just as a big big old chunky um, and this one you can actually see into the shell a bit from this angle and I just really like it I really like rustic stuff. I really like um, things where nature has naturally made holes into them. I'm a big fan of that sort of thing. So, <clears throat> again, everything on the table will come in a big, um, like a sea witch bone throwing kit, and that's what we've got down here on the table. Everything's clean. There's two actual big chunky bones that I found, and then lots of little vertebrae from the um, crucifix fish and lots of shells you could make into necklaces, also a big chunk of sea brick that brick I found in the sea, well in the in the ocean in the gulf okay so next we've got this piece Okay, and we've got, I don't know which one to save for last because I think that they're all so cool, but this one, I remember I found that black coral, and I remember we were reading about coral just the other day and how cool it is and it's part of Italian witchcraft and that. I don't know if this one would work for that because it's, does, it doesn't have red in it, like we were talking about putting it in a garter near your area during your moon, all of that. 
But I thought it would look beautiful on a necklace and it actually had a hole in it. So I just went right through the hole. <clears throat> and um, this might be one of my favorite pieces. Just to wear that coral right there and it's just so cool. So that one's a little bit higher. It kind of hangs more here where the other ones are here. Right next to the heart chakra. Okay, and then we've got... this necklace here which is another one of those gray shells and I've just tied it on to the back there I think this one hangs a little higher as well but at, right after this we're going to read about the properties of hemp and why that might be nice to have on your necklaces in the magical world. Okay, so this last one I really adore. I think that's why I left it there. Um, this is another hold stone shell. Um, it's a, an, one of these gray oyster shells that have just been through the water so much that it's just full of stones. And um, I like where it hangs, you know, right here, um, kind of right above the solar plexus. But again, this is for if you want to go out and hunt for fairies. Um, you put your, here's the back of it the front and I even wove this hemp through one of the little tiny holds, holes in the stones as you can see there's so many holes in here there's loads and loads of little holes and you'd be surprised even the tiniest hole you can look through and you can get a good picture but this one's got lots of big holes in it and I love big chunky statement pieces um, so again putting this on so that you can see through the veil uh, maybe go fairy hunting, etc. And, uh, and, and you just do this. You know, it's long enough to where you can put it over your head without having a clasp, okay? And then also to where you can hold it up to your eye and look through these little, there's the hole, you can see it now. There's a bunch of little holes all through this stone. So you can just go ahead and look through all those little holes. I think this is super great and super fun. So there is a link to my Etsy shop in the description. Um, it's my herb listing. And right after I get off the video with you guys, I'm going to list all of these necklaces that I've created. But let's talk about hemp really quick and its uh, magical qualities. So. Scott Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. I'm going to tip you guys down just to kind of look at the table while I'm talking. See all these things that are available in the kit. Is there a cat behind me? No, a pair of scissors. Okay, hemp. So, hemp is a byproduct of marijuana. Um, you know, marijuana looks like that. I have some I could show you that we grew if you want to see that. Um, let's go ahead and guess the gender, the planet, and the element, you guys. What, what gender do we think that hemp is? And again, here is some um, hemp. What gender do we think hemp is? What planet and what element? <clears throat> get some guesses in for that and uh... hi Joyce so nice to see you hi Thomas so the folk names are Chanvir Gallograss Gallograss that's interesting so thanks Thomas for guessing uh, oh Esoteric Dragon says hemp is male um, <clears throat> And Uncle Badger says, feminine and fire. Uncle Badger, you're pretty close. The gender is feminine. The planet is Saturn. And the element is water. Okay? Female. So I think we're all surprised that it's female except for Uncle Badger. Um, but yes, female, Saturn, and water. Uh, so we also know it as Ganeb, Gallagras, Ganja, Grass, Hanf, Keef, Marijuana, Neckweed, which is hilarious because we've made a bunch of necklaces out of it. Neckweed, um, and weed, and tekururi. Okay, so the powers of hemp are 
healing, love, visions, and meditation. How freaking perfect is it that we made a holy stone necklace on hemp, and hemp is good for visions. You see what I mean? I didn't know that before I looked it up, before I even made these necklaces, but now we're finding out why having a hold stone to look through tied on some hemp would be such a good idea in the magical world. It helps with visions, okay? Um, so let's keep going. So healing, love, visions, and meditations. Magical uses. Marijuana, or hemp, as it was commonly named. I'm just going to get some marijuana to show you guys because we're talking about it in this video and there's no reason why not to. Um, oh, no, esoteric dragon, you're absolutely right. There are male and female plants. And it's the female plants that make weed. And it's the male plants that don't. It's actually what got Alex into gardening initially was because we wanted to grow our own. Um, but let's see, here is a piece from last year. This variety is called the Obama Kush. It smells really good if you want to smell it. But uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of color in there and um, that is marijuana. And then... But this video right now, right here, we're talking about hemp, okay? Now here is some lovely stuff that we grew, and it's crazy purple. Look how purple this is. It's just uber lovely. I wish I was able to show you a little bit better. I hope it doesn't look brown, because it's not. It's like blackish purple. And that is a variety of some <clears throat> purple kush. Actually, I believe that one is a uh, lavender kush, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken, though. So that is marijuana that we grew here. Uh, I know, I wish you guys could smell it, too. Uh, no, Uncle Badger, and, and Alex should do a video on that, talking about, um, is this the one of the only plants that has that male feminine, and, and I do believe the answer is no. Um, so magical uses. Marijuana or hemp, as it was commonly named, was once widely used in magic. Due to laws enacting, enacted during the 1930s which restricted its use and sale, many of these practices are dying out. Here is a sampling of them. Hemp, so this cord that we're all familiar with, hemp, this one is just dyed black. Here's some hemp cord that is in its natural color. So we're talking about hemp. Um, hemp has long been used in love spells and divinations, such as in the following infamous hemp seed spell. Take a handful of hemp seeds to a church at midnight, preferably just as midsummer begins. Walk around the church nine times, sprinkle the hemp seeds as you walk, and repeat the following words. Hemp seed I sow, hemp seed I sow, who will come after me and mow? You will see a vision of your future husband or wife, and you may get the local church in trouble with the law. Hemp was part of many vision and scrying incenses. Okay, so the fact that we made this holy stone into a necklace with hemp attached to it, and hemp, hemp uh, helps with visions, it just really magnifies my um, confidence with my intuition and what I'm using in, what, in my pieces. Okay, so again, this is the sea witch bone throwing kit I've got, which has like actual bones and seashells and loads of gorgeous things that's going up on the Etsy. And then I made a variety of uh, different necklaces, like you can see here. Okay, all right, so let's continue the reading. Um, hemp was a part of many vision and scrying instances, the smoke of which opened the psychic senses. Mugwort and hemp, I use this a lot as a spliff, okay, but I use mugwort and marijuana. Mugwort and hemp were prescribed to be burned before a magic mirror to gain visions. It was also added to meditation incenses. Scourges made of hemp were used in China as imitation snakes, which were eat, which were beaten against beds of the sick to drive out the malicious illness-causing demons. So, I think 
that that's absolutely divine. What we just read and why, you know, these things just kind of fall into place. I put this hold stone on a necklace so that it would be long enough that you could lift it up from your neck where it's still on and look through these hold stones to do a form of scrying or looking through the veil or looking for the fae. Hey Hermit's Cave, how are you? So nice to see you. Um, we were just talking about the magical properties of hemp and I put some shells and stones that are holy onto some hemp. Hemp helps induce visions. And so I thought it would be great to have that right on this uh, necklace so you could just lift it up off your neck and look through the hold stone. So, um, so glad to have you here, Hermit's Cave. Everybody is excited to come to the 24-hour Tarathon. We're all really excited and, um, yeah, couldn't be more excited. So, thank you for joining us. And uh, I think, guys, I think as soon as my gardener is done outside, I don't actually have a gardener, but Alex has paid somebody to do the outside gardening while he's away. As soon as the gardener's gone, we're going to go out and pick some fresh mugwort because it is already on my bush. It's looking so good right now. And uh, the sun is about to move where the sun is hitting it, and that's when I like to harvest it, when the sun is going to be hitting it. Yeah, absolutely. So, just so many fun things that we found from the sea. Uh, I think these crucifix fish bones are some of my favorite little things that, you know, that we collected. And uh, they're just great. Um, they may break if you throw them, but I think that they would make splendid little earrings. You know how I love my taxidermy. Um, yeah, so this is what we've got for that Sea Witch bone throwing kit. Take one more look, and then I'm going to get all these things listed on the Etsy shop. And we will look forward to coming back soon and harvesting mugwort out of my garden. Okay, you guys, have a super beautiful and fantastic day. And Simon, thanks for stopping by. We look forward to 24-hour mm. Tarathon, and we'll see you there. Have a beautiful day, you guys. See you soon.